Hey guys, Veronica here. So I wanted to show you really quickly just a couple of the indicators that I look for when I'm picking melons and squash. It's not going to be the same across the board, but I can at least try and give you an idea. Um, since some of you have been asking about it, let's flip the camera around and get going. So the first one that I want to talk about are these cantaloupes. This is an ambrosia variety and they're what's called a slip stem. I'll show you another example of a slip stem as we move through the garden. So what you see here is that there's a little spot here on the stem where this melon connects to the plant. And when this melon is fully ripe, what'll happen, and I don't have a ripe one on here to show you right now, but what'll happen is the green on the inside of this webbing pattern that's whitish, um, it will start to turn yellow. And then you'll know that it's ready because when you push against the stem right here, it will give way. You'll also be able to smell it. You might see some fruit flies hanging about or other insects that are trying to get to it. But that will be the fastest way to know is that you'll just gently push this and it will release the melon. So here's another example of a slip stem. You can see when this melon is immature, it's also green, much like the ambrosia, that cantaloupe I just showed you. And as it begins to mature, it starts to turn yellow. Now, these ones also will work in the same way, um, where if you push against this spot where the stem connects to the melon, it will give way when it's ripe. I actually have one on this plant that's ripe. They saved just to show you. You can see there's some fruit flies flying off of it. Um, you can smell it just sitting here. Too bad we don't have smell-o-vision. But so if I just gently push right there, ah, and it pops right off. Sometimes these will release. Like if I left this one on for another day, it would just fall right off of the vine. But there you go, there's the slip stem. Uh, there's a lot of melons that fall into this category. So if you look up the variety you're growing and see you know, whether or not it's a slip stem or it's one that you have to cut off based on tendrils, which will be the watermelons I'm showing you next. When it comes to other melons, like these sugar baby watermelons that are not slip stem, uh, I look for a different indicator. While these will actually fall off the vine if they're being trellised and they get too heavy, um, which is why I have these slings that I've been slinging a lot of them in, uh, what I'm looking for here, rather than it falling off the vine, is this little brown tendril to turn brown. It'll start out green, so I'm looking for it to turn brown all the way back to the stem. That's usually a really good indicator that this melon is ripe for the picking. If you leave it on until it falls off, a lot of times it will go um, kind of mushy or grainy, like the fruit will still be fine, it's just it's not as great for fresh eating. But it'll make, you know, lovely popsicles or sorbets. So we're going to pick this one today as well. Now when you're talking about things like winter squash, pumpkins, anything that you're keeping for storage, we're looking at these a lot like we would look at the sugar baby watermelons. So like the spaghetti squash for instance. We're coming in and we're looking at this little green tendril right here. And if this tendril is not brown, I'm not going to harvest the squash yet. It needs to be brown to the base. Another way that you can tell whether or not you should pick this yet is by doing the fingernail test. And so what you do is you just come in on this squash very gently and push your fingernail in. And if it leaves a dent on the squash, that means that it's not fully cured on the vine yet. Um, it's still going to do some curing, you know, in your garage or basement or cellar or whatever but I'd give it some more time until I harvest it. Now, we want to think about harvesting in these terms versus letting the vines die and then picking it because you'll actually get a lot more squash if you do that. So I already harvested like half a dozen off of this trellis. Um, I have maybe another half a dozen that's all off of one plant. So by looking for those key indicators of when to pick these squash, you're gonna get ones that are gonna store really well and you might even get more squash. Now if you're saving a summer squash for seeds, you're going to do a similar thing to saving winter squash. You're going to be looking for that tendril again to be drying out, curling up, as you can see this little one that's right there. And you're going to look and see if you can dent it with your fingernail or not. This one is almost ready. I let these sit in the garden unprotected. Um, they actually end up being sort of insurance against the rabbits and gophers and gerbil looking mice that run through here at night because I'll show you over here what they do is they'll eat the ones that are exposed 
like this guy right here. And so they get in there and they just chew on it every night and hopefully stay away from my pumpkins in the process. So uh, occasionally I'll get a few of these left for saving seeds. Um, I usually get more than a few. So the pigs get some, the rabbits get some, and we get some for next year. All right, so the tendrils are brown and dried out on your winter squash or pumpkin. So how do you harvest this? Now, with most pumpkins, you want to leave a good amount of stem on the pumpkin, but not lose the rest of the vine if you're cutting it while everything is still growing. Because this plant might actually set more pumpkins down the row. Um, so once this is ready, and you can see that it is because it doesn't give to my fingernail, what I'll do is I'll cut it um, right there, right, let's see <laughs> if I can see this. I'll cut it right here, just where the stem connects to the vine. And that will give me a solid, you know, three or four inches of stem, and it'll leave the plant intact in case it decides to just like pump out a pumpkin before we freeze um, in the next month or so. And then I can put this pumpkin away for storage so that none of the animals looking for food for storage for winter as well are going to eat it. So we're going to harvest this pumpkin. You can see I'm harvesting it, but not cutting through the main vine it's attached to. Just like that. And this is still intact. Perfect. Here's another one of the same pumpkins that I just harvested. And this is also a Jardale. And you can tell that this one's not ripe. The color is still very green. It also still has its um, flower attached from when it was pollinated. That'll come off when as it expands. And if you push your nail in, which you don't want to do too hard, it's still very tender, see? So it'll leave a dent and that'll actually scar as it grows. So you don't want to do it too often at this size unless you're trying to, you know, scratch um, yeah, a secret message or something into it to scar and leave it in like this. This got scratched by the plant when it was younger. But again, we do the nail dent test and there's no dent that's left where I push my nail in. Whereas here, it's, you know, clearly kind of split. So just things to keep in mind as you are going around and seeing, you know, is it time to harvest these pumpkins yet or not? Hopefully this crash course on how to harvest melons and winter squash and summer squash for seed saving has kind of helped point you in the right direction. My best piece of advice would be to look up the variety that you're growing and find out, you know, if it's a melon, is it a slip stem? If it's not, you know, watch the tendrils on the winter squash and pumpkins and on the summer squash for seed saving. Like also watch the tendrils, watch for the stem starting to turn brown, do the fingernail indent test. Um, yeah, and just, you learn as you go. So, you know, get out there and pay attention to your plants. And drop me a question in the comments below if you have more questions on this subject. I'm sure that I missed something along the way. Um, if you like my videos, hit that subscribe button. Follow me on Instagram at FlavorKit. And until next time, happy gardening!